Good morning and greetings to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to all of my Abyssinia family. We greet you today once again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, who has made all things possible and has even brought us together once again on this day. This is a beautiful Sunday morning in the Lord's kingdom. And we thank God that we are a part of what he is doing. Today we're going to do something a little bit different as of course, this is the first Sunday in June. So this is our communion Sunday. And so what I'm going to ask of you now is that if you would gather together your communion supplies as I continue to talk, uh, turn up the volume so if you can continue to hear me if necessary, but we're going to ask that you would prepare your communion now that you might have it with you during the discourse of today's message. For today, where our message is going to be concerned and focused on communion. So we're just asking if you would just gather that while we are continuing to talk to you. We know that this week and for the last couple of weeks, it, uh, all of us have been inundated with everything that is taking place in and around our nation's capital and the United States and even global wise in all, so many countries around the world. All of the protesting that is taking place uh, for the uh, declaration of human rights and justice and uh, recognition of the African-American people uh, as we have all heard and so many people have been dialoguing and so many programs have been addressing it during the last couple of days uh, and I will be no different but I won't do that on today I think there are so many voices that are already uh, being spoken so, so we won't inundate you in this time and in this moment with that. But we will be coming to you in the very near future about what we, uh, what we see and what we feel needs to be done uh, in the cause of promoting uh, justice for all. So as you are getting your communion supplies together, we pray that God continues to bless you and is blessing your family. Uh, I pray that you're continuing to stay safe uh, in this uh, coronavirus pandemic that we are still enduring, even though they're starting to lift certain restrictions, but yet still the virus is still out there and is still running rampant through our community. So we pray that you are doing what you need to do to safeguard yourself and others as this virus continues to take hold. We know that our county is starting to uh, certainly release and uh, loosen restrictions, but at the Abyssinia Church, we are still under the phase one. Prince George's County is still under the phase one hold, uh, and we will be uh, holding meetings in the very near future as we begin to strategize about the reopening uh, as we begin to face the new norm that has now been placed before us. Uh, and we want to judge ourselves accordingly so that when we do get together, it will be at such a time and in such a, a manner that it is not uh, detrimental to anyone. As we know, our congregation, we have quite a number of elderly, uh, and even though some of our young folks, or even some of our elders, you may be asymptomatic, as they say, and feeling fine, but yet still could be carrying that virus, and that, and getting back together, you could impact and infect somebody else who may not do as well with it as you are. So we ask that you will continue to just bear with us and be patient. We are grateful unto God that he has given us this medium that we will be able to come to you and to share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ and also the fact that we have been using uh, Zoom uh, calls and teleconferencing calls and stuff in order to kind of stay in contact with those that we need to so that the work of 
the ministry can continue to go on. So we praise God for all of the modern apparatuses that we have, even as I am coming to you today, so that we know they may stop us from coming together physically, but they cannot stop us spiritually. So we thank you once again, and all of you for joining us on this day. I pray now that you have made it back to your seats and getting comfortable and are sitting up attentive and ready to hear the word of the Lord uh, as God has placed it in our hearts and our spirits to bring to you today. We're going to ask that you will go with us in the Bible to the book of 1 Corinthians. That is 1 Corinthians, the 12th, the 11th chapter, that's right, the 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and we're going to read in your hearing verses 23 through 30. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 30. Are you with me today? Praise God. Thank you so very much. You will find these words written from the New King James Version. It says, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause Many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again for another Sabbath day. We thank you once again for another opportunity to hear a word from you. We thank you today for our life, health, and strength, and the activity of our limbs. We thank you today for the grace that has fallen upon us and the mercy that you have endowed upon us. We pray today, O oh God, that as we re reach into your word, that you will speak to our hearts. For we know that your word, O oh God, is the preparation for the day that we shall stand before you. So Lord, we pray that you would teach us what you must teach us, that we might be all that we can be. Lord, we thank you for this time and we thank you for these people. This we do ask and pray in the mighty and blessed name of him who was dead, but yet now lives forevermore, Jesus the Christ and our Redeemer. And for our sakes, we say, Amen. God bless you. Today I want to talk to you from the thought, the Lord's Supper exam. We know the school are ending or getting ready to end and colleges are out and even though the uh, spring semester was abbreviated, but yet still during the course of this scholastic year, each and every student at some time or another has had the opportunity to sit down and take an exam. So that's why we're going to talk to you today about the Lord's supper exam. Now when something is done repetitively, we generally have the tendency to turn it into a ritual, one in which we 
give little thought about what we are doing. Because we have done it so often, we just go through the motions and we just go through the act of just doing it. But today I'm asking us to pause. Pause from the ritual practice and take an honest examination of ourselves as today we prepare to partake in the Lord's Supper. We have found that in life that there are all kinds of exams that we must pass. Exams to graduate from high school. Exams to acquire a license in order that we might drive a car. Exams to teach school or to cut hair. Exams even to be an electrician or fly an airplane or simply sell life insurance. In order to enter into these particular tasks, we find that you first must pass an exam. And we become very concerned about passing these exams because we know that failing to pass them could be indicative of a future failure. Well, my brothers and sisters, the Bible makes it clear that our allegiance to Jesus Christ will be tested from time to time. In fact, if we look at the Bible, we will find the biblical patriarchs were forced to take exams. I found out that Abraham was willing to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, the, the son of promise. Someone would anyone have any questions about the exam, certainly Abraham would. And after preparing the sacrifice, and being spared by an angel's hand, God said, now I know that thou fearest God because thou hast not withheld thine only son from me. Abraham passed his exam. But then there is also Moses. Moses would, the question was, would he settle for a chance to be a ruler of a great nation? Would he seize the opportunity to have great riches and fame? Or would he suffer with the people of God? The Bible lets us know that Brother Moses left it all and became a shepherd for 40 years. So Moses, therefore, passed. Let us look at Daniel. The question is, would he stop? Or would he continue to pray three times a day as he had always done? Hearing that the decree had gone forward from the king to no one was able to pray yet to, but to pray towards him, would he halt Mo, uh, Daniel from praying as he normally did? Or would he obey the king's command? Well, the record shows that Daniel was carted off to the lion's den. But yet he refused to be cut off from God. So Daniel passed his exam. How about those three Hebrew boys? Would they bow down to the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had erected? Would they humble themselves at the sounding of the trumpet? Or would they face the fiery furnace? The story says that they refused to obey the king's decree and their refusal indicates that they too passed their exam. 
And then, my brothers and sisters, there's our beloved Jesus. The Bible says that he is led into the wilderness to be tested. He faced his, his fear of death. And he faced the desire for fame. His appetite for food. And he had began a great mission. But that was to die for the salvation and the healing of all mankind. My brothers and sisters, thank God that Jesus passed his exam. But there is today another exam that you and I must study for and pass. And I call it the Lord's Supper Self-Assessment Exam. And the question that is put before us is, can you pass the Lord's Supper Exam? Whenever the Lord's Supper is celebrated, we must remember that there is a certain way that we approach before we access the Lord's table. When we come to the Lord's table, we are to be not only in the right standing before the Lord vertical, but we also must be in right standing amongst our brothers and sisters horizontally. And so Paul, in the text, is informing us that there were some irregularities in the way the Corinthians were celebrating the Lord's Supper. The behavior of some was taken away from the spiritual significance of the Lord's Supper. So Paul found it necessary to revisit his teachings on the doctrine of the Lord's Supper. And what he describes is appalling. He observes some digesting the Lord's Supper and pretending to be Christians. And so this inspired him to give us a threefold outline to help straighten out this derogative situation. The first thing Paul addresses is the purpose of the Lord's Supper. And he says there in verses 23 through 25, he says there, for I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup, is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke all record the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples the night before he died. And each writer describes Jesus giving thanks or blessing the bread and the cup and then giving them to his disciples, saying that this bread is my body and the cup is the blood of the covenant or the new covenant in his blood. And in Luke, Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. 
as we partake of this observance today. We need to remember the awful price that Jesus paid to save our soul. Remember that when he died on the cross, he was dying in our place. And that he suffered so greatly before hanging his head in the locks of his shoulder. And he says unto us, remember me. Remember that he was wounded for our transgression. Remember that he was bruised for our iniquity. Remember that the chastisement of peace was upon him. And remember that it is with his stripes that we are healed. Remembering that is the purpose of the Lord's Supper. And the second thing that Paul addresses in verse 26, he addresses the practice of the Lord's Supper. But there in verse 26, he said, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. And my brothers and sisters, whenever we digest the bread and drink from the cup, we need to remember that Jesus died, but three days later, he rose from the dead. And after he rose, he ascended back to heaven and sat down at the right hand of the Father to await the day when he will return back unto the earth to receive his people unto himself and I know some of you may be saying I already know all of this and I don't question it and I don't doubt that you do but as Jesus said remember me and remembering is pulling that knowledge that we've acquired from our mental data bank and putting it back to the forefront of our consciousness and therefore every time we take the Lord's Supper we are declaring to a lost world that we believe in a returning Savior we are declaring that we are preparing for a soon to come King we are declaring that we are citizens of his kingdom but my brothers and sisters our belief and our declaration must be supported by our practice. And so Paul says, because as Jesus saying, as often as you drink, the, as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. We, we remember his death. And the third area that Paul addresses in this particular passage of scripture is the peril of the Lord's Supper. Yes, we have the purpose. Yes, we know the practice. But we must understand that there is also a peril of the Lord's Supper. For there in the 27th verse, we will find the words that says, Wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. And this is what he was speaking of to the Corinthians. For the Corinthians were abusing the Lord's Supper as a meal for their physical being and not for their spiritual. The abuse may seem so insignificant to some folks today because we simply partake of a breadcrumb and a small glass of grape juice and some areas a little wine and we use those supplements to celebrate the Lord's Supper but yet there is a guilt assessed 
if we do so irreverently. Therefore, Paul's words calls us from ritual to reference and remembrance of our conduct. Because the conduct of the peril is written there in the 28th verse, whereby he says, let a man examine himself. And Paul gave the Corinthians an exam to see if they would pass or fail as true Christians discerning the Lord's body. Paul had received word that there were people in the church conducting themselves in inappropriate ways. There, there were division and cliques which uh, the church, within the church, which corrupted the Lord's body. But they ate it anyway, not discerning the Lord's body. And brothers and sisters, when divisions and cliques and fashions and parties exist, the spirit of the church is in disorder. And the person or persons uh, that are party to such an assault, that their mind and their heart is neither upon the Lord nor at peace with the Lord or with the Lord's people. Instead, they create disturbance. They bring pain, anger, and gossip, pride, and disrespect, and selfishness, and misunderstanding. And they end up killing the harmony and the happiness and the humility of the church. They're divisive and they're demanding. Simply because they believe that their agenda is more important than the Lord's. I ask you again today, can you pass the Lord's Supper exam? If you're guilty of this type and this manner of conduct, Paul recommended that you don't eat of the bread. You don't take of the cup and respectfully discern the Lord's body. But I am of the belief in the mindset that God allows divisions and cliques to exist for a reason. For the divisions cause the genuine believer to stand out even more. People who are divisive and cliquish cause the love and the truth of a genuine believer to shine ever brightly. The peril of the Lord's Supper. He says, in him doing so, he eateth and drinketh damnation unto himself. It seems that our God, our Lord, is taking this thing very seriously. And so he expects us to deal with our sins before we partake of the bread and of the fruit of the vine. And that's why, my brothers and sisters, prior to engaging in the Lord's Supper, we have a time for prayer. And I'm here to let you know today that God has not changed his mind. But Paul also addresses a confusion in the pearl. He says, not discerning the Lord's body. And the fact is, the reason that some in the Corinthian experience could not discern whether they were taking the Lord's Supper or not was because, as we read in the 21st verse of the 11th chapter, we read that there, there, there were drunkenness among them. And so this is the abuse that Paul is talking about in his discourse. The, the Corinthians were having the Lord's Supper at their social gatherings and some got drunk and could not discern the fact that they were actually participating in the Lord's Supper. 
And this, my brothers and sisters, is very disgraceful. And it is condemned. A condemnation for which God would bring judgment. But out of all of this, there is also a character in the peril. He says that for this cause, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. The judgment that came to those for their unholy manners, for their actions at the communion table of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, was to experience poor health and some even death. Even today, gross irreverence is not tolerated by God. Some folks think that nothing is happening to them. They just do what they want to do, how they want to do it, and come to the Lord's table and everything is all right because God doesn't do something in the instant, in the moment, that they feel as though everything is all right. But the Corinthians, my brothers and sisters, were so rank in their abuse of the Lord's Supper <coughs> that God had to act in a severe manner in disciplining them. And his discipline included both sickness and death. In other words, some folks took the Lord's Supper exam and they fail. And Paul warns us that if you come to the Lord's Supper, if you come to the Lord's table in a confrontational or callous or careless way that is not discerning the seriousness of what happened on the cross, you may, if you are a believer, you might just lose your life, if not because of the wrath of God, but as an act of God's fatherly discipline. So today, as we virtually and spiritually gather around the Lord's table, this should be one of the most meaningful occasions in our Christian life. As we personally remember what Jesus has done just for me as we remember the stripes that he received just for me, as we remember the cross that he bore just for me, as we remember the blood that he shed just for me, as we remember the life that he surrendered just for me, that is the price that he paid just for me. And today, this is our exam that we must seriously consider before presenting it unto our Lord. Because one day, we shall receive its grade. And it shall be graded as pass or fail. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we once again are broken and taken to the moment that was so tragic in your life, but yet proved to be so beneficial in ours. For the hours that led up to your hanging on Calvary's cross, we realize, O oh God, from your holy word, all the things that you endured, all the things that you encountered, and the mere fact of realizing and knowing that you were a sinless man, but you died for sin's sake. And so God, you did it just for me. So today, oh God, as we prepare to partake of the bread that represents your body and of the cup that represents the New Testament 
in your blood. We come so God with a fresh awareness of not only what you have done but also what you expect of us to do. So we ask the day God that you will bless our cup, bless our bread as we pause to remember you. We remember your sacrifice. We honor your memory. And most importantly, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. And today, God, as we come to your table, we also ask a special prayer for our brothers and sisters who are taking a stance on today for justice. As they're marching around in every major and major city and minor town all over the world. We ask, O oh God, that you would be with them. And if it is according to your will, O oh God, that you would move the hearts of those who are in leadership, that they might rise up and hear the cry of the people. And Lord, we will know without a shadow of a doubt, it was only us who made the cry, but it was you who moved the heart. So Lord, we ask your blessings upon us now as we continue to move forward in the blessed and holy name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We do remember. Amen. And now my brothers and sisters, as the Bible said on that night, that the Lord took bread and he broke it. And he said unto his disciples, to his disciples, take ye eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us receive the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And he continue on. And it says, after, after they had supped, which means after they had finished their dinner, that he took the cup. And he said, this is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us receive the cup of the New Testament. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, that we have once again partaken of the Lord's table. We have once again shared the Lord's body and his blood. Let us go forward into the world and into the lives in which God shall lead us and to represent and to tell the world of a living Christ who is coming back again to receive those who are his people and that anybody who would surrender themselves unto the Lord and accept him as their personal savior shall be covered by the acts that the Lord has done for us on Calvary. We thank you once again for tuning in and being with us today. We appreciate your continued support and again, we ask that you can visit us at www.abyssiniabaptistchurch.org. And there you might be able to leave your tithes or offerings and support 
this ministry, or you can use PayPal or Givelify, or you can even send your contributions to our church at 4705 Addison Road, Capitol Heights, Maryland, 20743. But we thank you always for supporting this ministry. And on this first Sunday in June, we want to take this opportunity now to recognize all of our June birthdays and anniversary celebrations. We celebrate along with you on your special day. And we pray that God's blessings will be upon you as you go forward. But once again, brothers and sisters, I take this time to thank you and pray God's blessings upon each one of you. Until 